I teach international relations. And as you can gather from the name, it has a working model of how we're together and apart on planet Earth. Yet as I ponder this time of coronavirus and fire and Anthropocene, I'm increasingly struck by how impoverished this picture is. In the crudest models of international relations, we all live within sovereign states, using our borders and our weapons to deter threats to our national security. We're competitive and suspicious, but also greedy for profit and trade. We're reluctant to cooperate, but if we do so, it's cynically with an eye to our own, our own interests rather than the common problems faced by the earth and humankind. We're quick to violence. Human lives don't matter very much. And the lives of the 8 million other species we share the earth with matter even less. Our power as individuals and communities can seem pointless and small. In this picture, we're separate and apart, but we're never together. And to be sure, COVID-19 has brought out these patterns. China jealously withholding information from the World Health Organization as the pandemic began. A nasty blame game between the US, its allies and China. And the poor and people of color dying at rates far beyond those with privilege and access to affordable health care. Governments have been forced to use spycraft and subterfuge to buy supplies of masks and PPE at inflated prices. Effective international cooperation is a mirage, and too many governments have failed to respect the power and evolutionary cunning of this most tiny of organisms. COVID-19 is also a symptom of the Anthropocene, this new epoch of the human domination over the living systems of planet Earth. The SARS-CoV-2 virus is similar to coronaviruses found in wild bats and the highly trafficked and endangered pangolin, which sells for $300 a pound in China, is suspected as the bridge for its transmission to humans. 17 years earlier, the civet cat played the same role in the SARS outbreak. The increasing encroachment by humans on wild habitat is creating strange new risks and endangering the future of all life. In fact, the rapid loss of the Earth's biodiversity in animal abundance is one of the key markers of the Anthropocene, a crisis so grave the biologists now say that we are living through the sixth mass extinction of species. Other markers of the Anthropocene include the real prospect of runaway climate change, the dramatic terraforming of the earth with dams, farms, concrete and bitumen, the pollution of our waterways, soils and oceans with plastics and chemicals, and the thousands of nuclear tests performed after the Second World War. Future scientists expect to find a geological layer marking off the Anthropocene from the Holocene. It will be made up of plastic, strontium-90, and chicken bones. Now, this, this picture of the Anthropocene can seem frightening and overwhelming. It is an epoch of much greater human vulnerability to the Earth as much as human power over the Earth. I felt this in Canberra as Australia burned last summer, under siege from fires so intense they were making their own weather. We woke to smoke so thick we couldn't see more than 100 metres. At night, as the air cooled, it would settle over the streets like a toxic blanket. It felt like the atmosphere, this thin layer of gas is so crucial to planetary life, was itself trying to kill us. And sadly, it did indeed take many lives before their time. So in the face of this, how can we find a sense of agency and hope in the Anthropocene? How can we think about thriving in the Anthropocene? I think we can do this by thinking more about how we're connected and apart, about how even when we're apart, we are building new kinds of community and togetherness. 
by remaining separate during the COVID-19 lockdowns, we've actually become part of something global and significant. By taking on loneliness and stress and separation, we've quite literally saved hundreds of millions of lives far beyond our shores. We're making a giant global we. And I'm painfully aware that in doing this, many have paid with their livelihoods and their financial security, and then have depended on another collective we, our state and national governments, to help ease their burden. But I'm not sure our governments have eased their burden, have honoured that sacrifice, that gift to the community that everyone has made, and some much more than others. But even as we've become more separated during this crisis, we have found new ways to connect and see ourselves as, as part of something larger, something that touches every single human being. The Anthropocene poses a similar challenge. The Earth's social and natural systems are now so enmeshed that even small decisions affect the lives of people and beings on the other side of the Earth. Will we fill the tank with gas? Where will we direct our votes? Where will we buy insurance, save our money, buy our energy, or invest our superannuation? And by making such decisions, how can we make the lives of all the world's beings better and safer? Decisions made in the global north to open up new oil fields, build highways, and block the development of electric cars could help cause the loss of 11% of Bangladesh's land area by 2050. Deforestation in the global south for soy, cattle and palm oil may cause the extinction of the critically endangered orangutan and many other species. Fire and coastal development in Australia put the future of the koala at risk. And scientists are writing with concern that human and corporate activity will soon transgress the Earth's planetary boundaries, the boundaries within which life can exist and flourish safely. During the fires, I would sometimes joke blackly about our new Venusian atmosphere. And some days, the Anthropocene can seem like an outlandish science fiction scenario. But there are also great opportunities to survive and indeed thrive if we're willing to honour our myriad connections to other lives in other places. Our children are showing us how much they want action on climate change. Germany's on a path to eliminate its dependence on coal while creating new green jobs and industries. The technologies to eliminate greenhouse emissions all exist or are within close reach. And global public health experts are telling us that if, if we can hold global warming to 1.5 degrees, we could save 150 million lives lost to cancer and respiratory illness before the end of the century. The Anthropocene is a situation in which all of our social natural systems are increasingly connected. But the COVID-19 crisis has also shown us there is virtue in separation. Consider our precious biodiversity. There is virtue and protection in supporting wildlife and wilderness to flourish in our absence. So let me conclude. Whatever the hardship and anxieties 2020 is bringing us, and they are considerable, it has underlined something simple and profound. In our connection, we're separated. In our separation, we're connected. Wherever we live, whether we're human or non-human, we're part of one community of fate. And that way lies hope. Thank you.